So, you're brand new to the game of Tarkov. First of all, welcome. I'm excited to have more people playing. But you have no idea what to run for your first loadout. We're gonna be talking about your weapon, your armor, meds, food, water, and some extras. Today, we're gonna be going over your very first loadout and what you should be running. Let's, uh, let's talk about it. What up guys and welcome back to the Expo and Hideout. If you guys have never been here before, I'm super excited you guys are here. In this channel, I have been dropping three to four videos a week on Tarkov. So if you feel like you don't wanna miss any Tarkov content, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. You can always hit the bell to never miss an upload. What I wanna talk about in this video is your very first upload. Tarkov could be one of those games that's very daunting in the beginning, especially when it comes to all the things you should be bringing. You do, like, should I bring this? Should I bring that? Will I need this? Will I lose this? There's just so many variables on what you should bring. I'm gonna give my honest opinion on what the best first loadout would be for you. So this is like literally jumping into your first, second, third, fourth, and fifth raids, you know, like very beginning. Um, so we're gonna be going over that and then we'll be dropping another video on other different loadouts you guys can run. And lastly, before we get into the video, I want you guys to know that I do stream on Twitch Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. I would love to have you guys by the stream. That's gonna be at 5 p.m. PST. Usually we have a lot of fun. So if you wanna talk about some of this stuff live, feel free to come by and hang out but with no further ado let's get into the video okay so we're going right into here and we're going to be going over the trader level ones because we're doing the very first loadout now i know that you can get trader level twos around level 15 but this is mainly going to be geared for levels like one to ten so um maybe even one to five so you guys will be able to have an idea of what you should run. And then if you don't like what I give you as advice, you can always switch it up, but at least you'll know the basic things that you'll need. Now, I wanna say also, in this video, there is many guides on YouTube on what people think the first thing you should bring in. Tarkov is one of those games where there are so many different opinions, and it doesn't mean my opinion is more right than somebody else's. I'm gonna try to give you guys reasoning behind why I'm telling you. I think this is gonna be your best weapon, best ammo, best armor. Um, what I think you should do about water and food, what I think you should do about meds, all that stuff. And I'm gonna try to give you some understanding and background. So with that being said, if you guys feel like you would recommend something different or you have a different opinion or I could have did something better or cheaper, feel free to let me know down in the comments. I love conversing with you guys about different things that have to do with Tarkov on better ways we could do this. We talk about this with the gun builds all the time. Sometimes I miss something or sometimes there's a better way to go about building a gun. And we talk about it in the comments, no big deal. I actually really like it. So I will be responding to all the comments as well. Okay, so first we're gonna go over the weapon and ammo that I recommend for your very first loadout. Now, this is gonna be controversial on this aspect of this gun which is what we're looking at right now and that is the AKM the reason why is because a lot of people look at this as like a more expensive weapon which if you purchase the weapon it is but in the beginning on level one you can actually barter for this for three Tashunka, which is the beef stew option now you do start with these so you could right off the bat get these but the reason why I think this is one of the most on point uh first guns to get one, because food and water are easy to come by. Um, I have a stash guide that I'm gonna list for you guys and all other links that you guys need will be down below. On that stash guide, I come across so much food and drink in stashes. You find food and drink in bags, you find food and drink in um, crazy spots, right? You can find it just on the floor, whether you're going into customs, which I recommend as a first map. We can talk about that at a different time though. You can find it in gas station, you can find it in ice cream shop. There's so many places where you just find food and water. And in the beginning, food and water is one of those things that you definitely wanna grab because we'll talk about it in a little bit on this video about how scarce it is and expensive it is in the beginning. So I think that if you trade Tashanka, for this AKM, that is what I would go with. You're gonna save money because you aren't gonna be vendoring these for less. You're actually gonna be getting a weapon. Plus in the beginning, now my other recommendation being the SKS. Um, so let's go ahead and click on these so you guys can see them. This would be my other recommendation. Um, and the reason why I recommend one of these two weapons is because they both run the 7.62 by 39 round, which is a really good round. And you can get the PS ammo, which is right here, from proper level one. As an entry level round, you are gonna do work with this round, whether you're killing scavs or PMCs. So that is why my go-to would be one of these two weapons. 
um, being one that is a barter and one that is going to be 23,000 rubles, um, just depending. Now, the AKM can go full auto, which sometimes will be the make or break for your beginning fights because you might come into this game and not be used to the mechanics or not have the best accuracy. Now, the SKS is an amazing option, um, but you have to land your shots. You have less rounds in the magazine, you have to land them, and it's semi-automatic versus this being fully automatic. So if you actually do need to mow someone down, you can. Um, and you can also go semi-auto and have that 30 round magazine. So it gives you a little bit more room to play with. Or you could just have more ammo on you in general. Now, most people would argue that the AKM is not a beginner friendly weapon because of the high vertical recoil. But like I said, it is what it is. Um, I think it's a great first weapon. I don't think you need a sight on it. Um, now, I personally really like AKs. So if you feel like you want to add a sight, you can always add one for pretty cheap. You can always add a couple parts like a pistol grip or a stock for pretty cheap to um, maximize the ergo um, and minimize the vertical recoil. We also have a video all about ergonomics and recoil. So if you don't know anything about it, you can watch that video later and it will explain pretty much everything. Okay, so since we're on the same page that this is your very first loadout, right? This is not like level 15 loadout. This is like, what am I taking in my very first time? We're gonna go to the next part of it, which is your armor. Now for armor, we're actually gonna be going to Ragman and we're gonna be doing Ragman level one because it's your first loadout. So on Ragman level one, um, I would recommend you get the Paka soft armor. Now it is only a armor class level two, which means that any type of ammunition that pens or penetrates um, 21 or higher or 20 or higher is going to pen through this. Now I'm gonna be real with you. A lot of people argue that you should never waste money on this and you shouldn't run it because of how many different rounds, even like some pistol rounds, will penetrate this and make it seem like you're essentially wearing paper. Now, the reason why I recommend the Paka as part of your first loadout and in general is this is a game about surviving. If you want to thrive in this game, if you wanna make more money, almost everything in this game revolves around staying alive. So in my opinion, I think that you should invest in stuff that helps you stay alive. So if there's a 15% chance that this armor is going to keep you alive in that raid, I would buy it. And now that is the controversial opinion because some people are like, well, no, you're just wasting money and you're going to die anyway. Well, we don't know that because you're choosing not to run it as a beginner. So I would recommend buying this. Um, you know, don't want to go back and forth about it. This is going to basically keep you alive from scabs. That's it. The reason why I recommend it in the beginning is because this will make it so that those, some of those shotguns that the scabs are running, some of the very cheap ammo that is like the high damage, low pen, like really low pen. I'm talking like 10. It's not going to pen this. It will keep you alive and it'll give you an opportunity to exchange fire and actually kill that scab or possibly kill that PMC, depending on what they're working with. So this is what I'm going to recommend. Okay, so the last thing I wanna say about the Paka is that you only have to buy the first couple because most of the time, if you're killing a lot of scavs, you're gonna find half masks and barter is something you wanna pay attention to as a new player because you essentially get stuff for free, right? You're finding stuff, you're bringing it in raid. They don't take up a lot of room. Right here, we can see that the barter is three of these half masks, which many scavs wear. Grab these, come back, you get a free Paka. You don't have to spend the 28,000 rubles. And then also I would recommend this helmet. Now this all goes back to the same thing. This is the green steel helmet, the uh, SSH 68. This is gonna be an armor class level three with a high ricochet chance. This is actually a really good helmet. I would actually say that you can run this helmet all the way up until you can find level four helmets. Now for the people who don't think you should wear a helmet, the don't worry about that. There's gonna be people who say helmets don't matter. You're gonna get shot in the face anyway. Helmets have actually saved my life multiple times. So I think that, like I said before, it's the same argument. If this is gonna give me a higher chance of surviving the raid and coming out with what I want, making more money, um, then I'm gonna wear it. So in the beginning, I would recommend the green steel helmet. Um, you can find it for the 21,849 rubles, armor class level three, high ricochet. And in my opinion, I think it's gonna help you stay alive longer. Now, one of the things that people say are very optional in the beginning is what we're going over next is the active headset, the GSSH-1. People say it's trash, um, don't wear it, it's pointless. 
Now, even though I don't think the sound quality on this is good at all, and I'm gonna be doing another video on all the headsets, what they all sound like, so you guys can see kind of like what you like, why they're more expensive, why they're less expensive. This headset is necessary. Audio is one of the biggest keys in this game to surviving, whether it is engaging somebody that is just ran through a bush next to you, whether it's somebody walking um, in the building next to you, if say they walked on wood, walked on metal, there are so many things you do not hear if you have no headset on. So I say headset is essential. I would actually say if you could only afford a headset or a helmet, I would say run a headset. That is how set I am on running active headsets in this game. I think they're completely vital for surviving. And I think as a beginner, you should wear one. Um, it's gonna give you a better understanding of the game. It's gonna make you more sensitive to how the game is played. And so I think you should run one. They are 12,919 rubles. And I think it's an absolute must. Um, the next thing we're gonna go over is rig. Now, there's an argument that says you should run a backpack over a rig. I disagree and I'm gonna tell you why. I think you should run this bank robber. It's one of the most powerful items early game. The reason why is because in a bank robber, which is I believe a two by four essentially, right? You get to put your magazines that you pull from or you pull from your pockets, but you only have four one slots in your pocket. You hit, so you can pull magazines, you can put grenades, you can put heels, anything you put here, you can key bind. And that's what makes it powerful because you don't have to tab in to use it. A backpack, you do. You can't just pull a magazine out of your backpack and reload it when you really need to. And that's one thing in Tarkov that you need to understand is you're not gonna be prepared most of the time things happen. You need to be prepared beforehand and not be reactive. You need to be proactive in this game to have a better chance of surviving. So I think the bank robber is better. And then the other reason why I think the bank robber is better than a backpack is because if you're, if we're saying you're only running one, right? Um, is because many, many scavs have backpacks and almost all PMCs, unless they're like a hatchet runner or a pistoling are going to have someone who only runs a pistol into the round are gonna have backpacks, which means as soon as you get your first kill, even on a scav, you're most likely gonna just snatch that backpack and you already have a backpack. So that's what I would kind of rely on in your first runs is to not come in fully geared and then just lose everything, but be able to come in with like some preparedness, but not so that you're so frustrated when you just keep losing all of your stuff. So we're gonna go no backpack right now. We're gonna go just the bank robber and you could get the bank robber for 9,742 rubles. And this is still gonna be, we're on Ragman level one. We're doing all level one traders. Now, the next thing we're gonna talk about is meds and food. Now that is gonna be at therapist. We're gonna go to therapist level one. So when we talk about meds, this is gonna be something that you're actually gonna start with in your stash when you first start the game. Now, whether you use those or whether you buy them, it's totally up to you. I don't know what you have in your stash right now. So we're gonna talk about buying them right now. You need to have something that heals you, something that stops bleeds, whether it's a large med kit that does that or a bandage because bleeds will kill you. If you bleed out, um, you're gonna bring in a splint, even though some people say just work through it. You don't need a splint at first, it's a waste of money. I disagree because if you have a broken arm or a broken leg, you're gonna be making a ton of noise because your dude's gonna be like, ah, 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 and as he does that, everybody is alert, first of all, that you're hurt. So they are way more likely to engage you and take advantage of the situation. Second, they know exactly where you're at because your dude won't stop making noises. And that is even if you're using painkillers. Now, even when you use painkillers, now it does give you the ability to run on a broken leg or aim down sights with a broken arm, but your guy is still gonna be wincing in pain, which is just not good. You just don't want that because you're gonna get killed easier. So we're talking about surviving, bring in a splint. Now you can totally put that splint in your alpha, beta, gamma, whatever you have. Um, and save it for if you really need it. Um, that way you're just not wasting money. Um, as well as heals, as well as bandage, whatever you think is gonna be the most worth it for you. Um, so maybe recommend putting your heals and putting your splint and then whatever else you wanna put in there, extra ammo, um, you know, something else. That could be something different we'll talk about. Bring in a splint. So we have the cheese, 
which is the A12 med kit. This is gonna be your main source of healing in the beginning. You can also, as soon as possible, start crafting these in the hideout for one of these little pile of meds. You can get three of these cheese, which is really good deal in the beginning. Um, then we're gonna have the aseptic bandage, which is going to heal your bleeds um, and not cost you anything from one of your big med kits. And it's also quicker. Then we're gonna have the immobilizing splint, which is gonna be for your broken arm, your broken leg. When you get shot with different rounds, it has chance to break your limbs. So that's what we're gonna be using this for. Um, and then you're gonna have your painkillers. Now, I, I highly recommend starting using painkillers in the beginning because painkillers can help you stay alive and get away to cover if you start getting fired upon and don't know where somebody's at. Um, it can help you move if you do have a break and you only used one splint, but you have two broken legs, you're still gonna be able to move. Um, you're still gonna be able to ADS with a broken arm. There's many things that this helps. Now, what this will do though, is if you start using all of your painkillers right away, especially in the beginning, is it's gonna cause you to lose energy and it's gonna dehydrate you. Um, so with that being said, you want to kind of use them sparingly. You don't want to be just like pill popping the whole entire raid. And if you do, you're going to definitely want to make sure you bring in a water bottle, even though with this very first loadout, I'm going to say, depending on the map you choose, which I recommend customs as your first map, a water bottle is something that's extra. Um, you're most likely in, in the midst of 30 minutes unless you get a blacked out stomach or you start using a bunch of painkillers. You're not going to need to have water or anything to drink or eat. You should be able to make it out of the raid and do that in the raid. Now, if you do want to level up your metabolism, you're always going to want to eat and drink when you need to in raid. So if you need to eat and drink in your stash, just bring something into the raid. And then as soon as you get into the raid, just eat and drink. And then we can get that skill leveled up. So that is gonna be for um, your meds options. Next, we're gonna be going into the extra options, which is the first thing we just said, or the last thing we just said, which is the water bottle. I think water bottle is one of those things that is to bring in extra as well as food, um, definitely in the beginning game. So when we're looking at what you can buy, look at these options, guys. We have army crackers for 18,000 rubles. That is a crime. Do not buy these. And then we have this option, which is a trade for a syringe, which isn't commonly found, right? You can find it in bags in some places, but it's not commonly found. You have a Slickers, which is also a barter item. And then you have the Sari, which is a barter item. Now, the Sari is gonna be your go-to because in filing cabinets especially, you can find up to four or five matches and you can find probably like four or five crickets. So it's one-to-one -one for one of these. So make sure you're saving these barters, matches, and crickets, and then you can come back and get some food for yourself early game. But do not buy army crackers unless you really, really need to. 20,000 rubles essentially for army crackers. It's just it's a crime. So both of those, I would say, are optional depending on where you go. Um, if you're going to Shoreline or Woods, you know you're going to be in the raid for a long time. Um, even like Interchange, you're going to be there the whole time, stuff like that, Reserve. Then definitely bring some food um, and bring some. But like I said, there's a stash guide that I'm going to link for you guys. And there's a lot of food and drink in most of those stashes. So you should be good if you find them in raid as well. Now, the last thing we're going to talk about that's considered an extra, in my opinion, is the backpack. Um, in the beginning, you can only buy this or you can only barter for this with two dog tags, which means you need two PMC kills um, to even get this. And then this one, which is 1991, 1,991 rubles, in my opinion, is not worth a two by three backpack. It's very, very small. Um, you can probably get something bigger off of killing your very first scav because most backpacks are bigger than this one. So. It's up to you, it's really not that expensive, but I still think it's a waste of money. That's gonna be your call. And then we have the army bag for one Ionka, which is the chocolate bars that you use to craft sugar. Do not do it. These are 40,000 rubles in flea market, and I know you can't access flea market right now, but just don't do it. It's a terrible, absolutely terrible trade. So basically you're left with this if you actually want to get a backpack. So guys, that's pretty much going to wrap up your very first loadout. Please, please, if you guys have any questions, let me know in the YouTube comments. I will be getting back to every single one of you guys. I want to hear your guys' thoughts. I want to know your guys' questions, and hopefully I'll have an answer for you. Um, that's going to bring us price-wise. So if you're going to be running it with the SKS, it's going to run 106,162 rubles. If you run it with the AKM because of the barter, it's going to be 83,096 rubles. And if you run it with everything, including the water, the sorry for the barter, and the sling as your backpack, it's gonna be 120,219 rubles. Um, as you begin to play this game, you're gonna be able to decide for yourself 
how easy it is to kill scav, how easy it is to kill in PMC, what you find in stashes often versus what you don't. And then from there, you're gonna be able to kind of bring in stuff. But what I do recommend guys is knowing in the beginning a couple things. As a beginner player, your main objective, don't worry about if you're a streamer or you know people that play with you, don't worry about people who say you're ratting and try to get on you for being a beginner player and trying to stay alive. You need to stay alive. Ratting is actually a tactic in this game. So don't take that as a diss. I know that it's kind of become a diss in the Tarkov community and everyone's like, oh, you know, you need to chad. You shouldn't rat and, you know, a little rat. And we say that when we're irritated. I even do at times. I got killed by a dude extract camping on shoreline. I'm like, oh, you little bush rat. But at the end of the day, sometimes you have to rat. I rat. Everybody rats at some point to get certain objectives done. Your objective in the beginning is to stay alive. So do what you can. Kill scavs loot carefully make sure you get out with more and more stuff increase that stash value increase your stash cash that way you can get better weapons have better survivability and chances be able to you know level up your hideout all those things you need money for and if you keep going into raids and just rushing and dying especially if you're bringing in everything we're saying so let's just say you went in with your first loadout every time that means you can lose a million if you run 10 runs that doesn't sound amazing, especially because you only start out with a limited amount of funds. You need to make money, not lose money. So put what you can in your gamma that you don't want to lose and rat it out. Do what you need to do. Now, if you're just a savage beast who just head eyes as everybody, don't worry about it. Put on that SKS and get your money, boo. But that is for everybody for the most part. Just kind of try to have that understanding in the beginning. A lot of us watch people who are better than us, including myself. And then we go into a raid trying to do what they're doing and you just get annihilated. So play what style matches your skill and then your skill will build up and you will get better as the game progresses. I really appreciate you guys stopping by and watching the video. If you guys got some value out of this video, make sure you smash that like button. It goes a long way for the channel in pushing my videos up so more people see them. Um, once again, I just wanna thank you guys for a thousand subscribers. It is, it's been huge. YouTube channel has just been really, really growing and I have you guys to thank for it. Um, I drop three to four videos a week on Tarkov. So make sure you guys subscribe if you wanna see more content like this and hit the little bell if you never wanna miss an upload. Lastly, I would love to see you guys by the Twitch channel. I Twitch, I Twitch. I stream at twitch.tv slash xvlnghost at 5 p.m. PST, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. Whether you guys wanna talk about this stuff live, get into some raids, or just hang out, usually we have an amazing time, so I'd love to have you. I hope you guys are very blessed. I hope you have an amazing day or night, depending on where you're at in the world. I hope your very first loadout works well for you and your raids are plentiful. And I will catch you on the next one. Peace. He's dead. <laughs>